everyone <laughs> welcome to my <laughs> my troubles so I have this thing with color choices where I get very very focused on kind of getting the perfect colors for a perfect painting and whatever I spend sometimes way too much time in my opinion anyway on picking colors for a painting so yeah this is what happened here the problem starts with these photos now these are definitely enhanced by um, Photoshop but they are also not crazy far from the truth this is just uh, uh, like a bush that we have in our garden I have no idea what it's called no clue and it just has now all these autumn colors so while yes it doesn't exactly look like this but I was just looking at it from my window and then I had to go there and take some close-up shots because it was just so so beautiful so this is a very challenging I have here three photos I think I want to make the focal point of this painting probably one of these branches with leaves and then I would really love to try and also include these um, I guess there are some sort of berries I don't think it's anything edible but and I just love I mean how dark the the branches or stems I don't know it's like a bush it's not really a tree I just love how dark they are and uh, I just find this bush <laughs> magical so yeah so I want to paint it and I I really felt like for this I have to bring back all my super bright colors I've been doing like a lot of uh, painting these carcasses or something I think they're called <laughs> talked about it in a previous video sorry about the light the Sun is right now uh, coming through the window but I don't think it's that horrible so you can see these are a lot calmer than this color party and this just makes me happy to look at it but yeah so <laughs> that's where I'm at and here I did like a really kind of quick um, sketch I'm also reading Jean Haynes's uh, atmospheric watercolors which is beautiful but it's one of those books you know you read it you get like super excited about you know the gorgeous art in it and her encouraging words and then you try to paint and well turns out that reading a Jean Haynes book doesn't actually make you Jean Haynes so <laughs> let me know in the comments if you also feel that um, artist frustration <laughs> struggling artist frustration <laughs> anyway um, yeah so I am trying first of all I'm trying to kind of narrow down I don't want to have like eight colors for this so I'm trying to narrow them down and I thought maybe we could try this together and I can walk you through my thought process so I'm hoping to keep it down maybe to five colors and and um, I want definitely I need a yellow and I definitely need a darker color and I definitely need like a red or I think I think I will need a red here I usually go for all the magentas but I think the red here is such a major color now of course you know as an artist and a painter you can do whatever you want and if I decide I want to paint these leaves in pink then I totally can but yeah so I just started paint like I grabbed some paints I don't have all of them in my palette um, because I'm working a little bit uh, differently now with my palette so I just squeeze out paint as I need it and what I definitely can see is that certain colors look very muted compared to the other um, kind of you know bright bombs that I have here <laughs> so from these yellows the ones that I picked I definitely wanted an orangey yellow and I really need I feel like I need a yellow here that will bring the sunshine to this and 
yeah, it's just, to me, yellow is one of those colors that really brings um, a flower, a, a paint, a painter, a, blah, a painting uh, to life. So I have here the Nickel Azo Yellow, New Gambosian, Quinacridone Gold, all of them are Daniel Smith. And I have to say, I am not sure. I think they, they all look like a good choice. I'm thinking maybe the Quinacridone Gold will give me a little bit more variety because I can build the intensity of it. You can see that the dark is darker than these. And I think that might be a good choice here. Of course, I can also go with two yellows, but let's say I'm trying to narrow it down. So maybe Quinacridone Gold. Now for the dark colors, I really love the pops here of this kind of bluish purple. You can see it really well here and also here more um, fuzzy in the background. And for that, I think maybe the Schmincke Brilliant Blue Violet is a good choice. Now, mind you that some of these, like these colors here, are not light fast. Um, these are the Schmincke kind of more neon colors. So if that's a concern to you, maybe stay away from those. And I have to say, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I could go with all three here, but I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll do that because when I look at these areas, they kind of really look like a combination of all these three. So if I do skip one color, it will probably be this one because it is so so intense so maybe the, just these two and as for my red i'm thinking alizarin crimson which is not a color that i use a lot i actually yeah i just tend to go with you know quinacridone rose or another pink <laughs> but i might go with this one and another color that I felt would really be nice here is Quinacridone Coral, which I absolutely love. Um, this one is Daniel Smith, Alizarin Crimson. I have one from Windsor & Newton. These are Schmincke, I said that. As for the darks, you can see here I've auditioned a few. So we have here Holbein Mineral Violet, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. I'll let you maybe take a closer look at just how beautiful it is and you can see it has it's a combination of okay mineral violet this is definitely a color that I will repurchase when I finish this small tube and let's see what it has so it's a Holbein paint and does it say okay it has uh, not surprisingly can you see this Okay, now you can see this. Um, PB29, which is ultramarine blue, PR122, and PBR25. So the ultramarine blue is what gives that fantastic um, blue kind of sediment that sinks in. I love this as a choice for my dark. And... Yeah, the other ones that I have here are the, where are you? I just bought a tube of this. This is the naphthamide <laughs> maroon from Daniel Smith. And yeah, it's this beautiful, beautiful deep color. It's more um, red than this, obviously. This is more purple. This is more like a, a burgundy, I guess, or yeah, just redder. And then indigo I thought would also be an interesting uh, choice. There's a lot of color going on here. There's also some touches of green here. Oh, now when I think about it, actually a color that I think might be interesting here is... Okay, so I'm thinking about in Danthron Blue. Forgive me if I butchered that which is a very kind of deep, inky blue. And I think that might be a good choice here. So maybe even better than the indigo, which you can see it's not as like blue. It's, it's more of a neutral, like a bit more muted, even though it's, it 
can get very dark. But I feel like this could also go pretty dark. So maybe, yeah, I think this would be actually a really good choice. Um, kind of annoyed that I don't have this color in a tube <laughs> because I can't really squeeze it into my palette. I have to use this half pan, but you know, that's first world problems. So yeah, that could be an interesting choice. And then with some of the yellow, let's see, we could probably get some interesting greens. Yeah, so, okay, that's that's an interesting choice. I'll zoom you in a bit. And you see, that's where I could get lost. And instead of actually painting, I can just test colors until the cows come home. So, yeah. <laughs> but those are, like, fun problems to have. Okay. It's time for some swatching. So I committed to four on this little piece of paper. So the first one is quinacridone gold. And I really, really like how it's looking. And the one thing that I might consider adding another yellow or switch it for another yellow is because my nickel azo yellow just pushes the other colors around a little bit more and I might want that quality uh, in this particular painting. However, I also have quinacridone gold from Core, which will probably push all the other colors anyway because all my other paints here are not from Core. So I might do that. Now the second color that I'm swatching here is the Schmincke Brilliant Purple. And I just wanted to see the range of oranges that I could get with it. And I thought maybe I could skip the alizarin crimson, but I don't think so. I think um, it still doesn't get... I, I, I think the alizarin crimson would be actually a good choice here. So now we're at five colors. <laughs> now this one is the Schmincke Brilliant Blue Violet. You can see this is a very, very intense color. And I'm thinking I will include it because it gives me... A lot of violets when I mix it with the brilliant purple and then it can give me those deeper bluer purples if I mix it with the indanthron blue which is what I'm adding now so we're already now at six colors <laughs> I think I uh, I will leave the Schmincke brilliant red violet out because um, I can mix similar versions of it with the other two Schmincke colors and last one, my, I think probably the darkest color here is the Holbein Mineral Violet. This color is just beautiful. I, I, I'm, I think I will already put a large tube of it in my cart at Jackson's Arts for my next purchase <laughs> because I don't want to run out. So I'm just playing around and you see now I'm, I'm trying to, I'm dipping that quinacridone gold in other areas and it just doesn't push the paint as much as the nickel azo yellow, which is what I have now on my brush and you can see the difference. So I'm thinking maybe this, you know, color wise, it's probably not as perfect as the quinacridone gold but with its qualities, it might be better. Of course I can use them both, but yeah, I just, sometimes it's just simpler to narrow down my color choices. I am not the type of person that will ever commit to a very limited palette. However, in each painting, I do try to keep things, to keep it to a certain limitation of colors. And yeah. I think I'm happy with this, so I think it's time to <laughs> stop swatching and go painting. And I'm just looking at what I have here next to my photos, and you can see some, some still shots of what I went with. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.